we go. Uh, this week, it's gonna be different. Welcome to Art Day. Happy Monday. Hope you're getting ready for a beautiful day. Hope you're um, doing good health-wise and such. Um, today, I do have a different kind of a video for you, at least from my usual way to uh, go about blah, 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 to go about art today. Um, you might have an inkling already. Yes, this is a voiceover. So this week um, I actually had a project. As you can see, I do have my uh, line work done there. And uh, I decided to go for a voiceover because this is one of the paintings that um, are related to a song. So if you know me for a while, if you've seen some of my older videos, uh, what I like to do once in a while or what just happens and I, I just can't um, influence anything about it is when I listen to music and I hear a new song that I don't or that I didn't ever hear before, and I really like it, um, or like parts of it, uh, something happens in my mind, I do see a mental picture, and it is always a scenery or something, but it is not in a realistic way, it's in form of artwork. So uh, this time... Um, I was chatting back and forth with a dear friend of mine and uh, we were talking about music. Um, he had sent a text to me saying, haha, I'm on my way to somewhere and uh, I'm having the weirdest uh, playlist currently. And he sent me the, um, he sent me the, oh gosh, uh, a few songs of the playlist, like five of them. And I didn't, I, I knew the first song, I didn't know any of the others. And um, then I listened to the songs and with every one of those five songs, I saw something in my mind, a mental picture, that's what I call it, an idea, something that was different kind of, different kinds of artwork. So for one, I saw a comic strip in my mind, in the art style of um, the illustrations in the book, The Little Prince. Another one was made with acrylics and I just saw certain colors, but not a, um, a theme or a scene or something. And then there was this song uh, that inspired this particular pi picture that I'm currently painting there. And it is called, let me get back to the other one that I don't misquote it. It's uh, called Animal I Have Become by Three Days Grace. And I listened to that song. And when you hear the guitar riff and the bass, I just had this picture in my mind. Chrome oxide green, watercolor and a scene of two guys fighting in a battle. I didn't have an era set, so it, it wasn't Roman times or, I don't know, um, whatever um, modern kinds of fights, like soldiers and long-range weapons and such. No, it, it was just, I had um, the picture the the part um from the right hand uh fighter um the the face so the head and those raised arms and something in his hand i wasn't sure if it would be a sword or maybe like a bolo or just an axe or whatever it was i just had this mental picture in my mind and i texted him back and i said you know, this is what my mind does when I listen to those songs. And I liked that and that element about that and that song. And for the last one, I said, you know, I really like the guitar riff. I like the drums. I like the deep volume, vol 
the deep voice with that volume of the lead singer. I just really like it. So I'm putting that on my inspiring music um, playlist on uh, YouTube so that I can re-listen to it whenever I feel like it. And he said, you know, I really like that scene. Why don't you paint it? Because I said, you know, I'm, I'm getting that itch in my fingers. I want to paint it. This is the one that I feel most drawn to. And he said, you know what? Make it your next art project. Do me a favor, please. It's, it's going to probably look really cool. Please paint it. Well, so a couple of weeks have gone by. And yes, I did paint it. And what happens when I have an inspiration for... Um, the, from from these kinds of muses, so the music in this um, particular case, um, I need to listen to the same song over and over and over again while I paint. But I cannot do that without copyright infringement when if I want to have my um, audio recorder running at the same time. And I didn't want to... Um, I didn't want to have the song play for you on loop for like an hour or two of video time. So um, I had thought, well, maybe I just listen to it via headphones and then I talk on the mic and I'm saying maybe like, I'm sorry if I sound weird like once in a while or if, or if I don't talk too much, but I'm listening to that song because it is the one that sparked the idea for this painting and then I said ah oh, no this is this is really horrible to listen um to listen at like for you guys um because you hear because I well even with my headphones I really like to blast the music music really loud so you would probably hear parts of the song it could still be trouble with copyright and it would really be just too much for my brain to concentrate on painting listening, being in that emotional state, very raw state, and being then at the same time in that rational, quote-unquote, teacher state where I talk to you guys in a semi-coherent way. So I said, um, you know, nope, I'm, I'm just going to record a voiceover for this painting, though I'm pretty sure that in like two or three minutes I don't know what to say anymore um, and I still have like an hour and 20 minutes to go but <coughs> excuse me I just I just opted for this particular way of uh, presenting the video to you so uh, now that you know the background story um, of uh, what was the inspiration for this painting, uh, let's go a little more into the technical things here, right? So I'm using watercolors uh, on watercolor paper and the exact um, shades I used, like the exact colors and um, what kind of a paper and such, it's all on the blog. So once this video is out, <clears throat> an hour later, the blog post is automatically published. So you can look up what kind of paper I used or what colors I used in case you're interested, you like the color combo and uh, want to try it maybe on a project of your own. But uh, what I did before I started painting, so this whole painting, this whole picture, <coughs> excuse me, I caught a cold. Yay, ventilators and air conditioner in the car. They're not my jam. I'm so sorry. So <clears throat> let me get a cough drop because I uh, bought some extra for uh, this video um, voiceover work today because I knew it would strain my voice. Mm. Cough drop is in and it's, um, what's it called? It's apple mint. It's quite, quite nice from uh, Ricola, so no ad here, no sponsoring, no nothing. It's just what um, makes me able to speak without coughing all over the place, I hope. So anyway, um, before I started painting, so before I started recording this video, there was actually a two and a half, almost three hour process 
before. But I didn't want to capture that on video because that would make like two or three art day videos. And honestly, uh, no, I'm, I just didn't feel like it. I felt like uh, I want to show you some watercolor painting and not drawing. I'm going to go back to drawing soon-ish, I guess. Maybe, maybe next week. I don't know. I haven't decided. Mm. But what I started with was researching positions, like fight positions. So I looked at tons and tons and tons of photos that people shot uh, at like um, these medieval festivals and um, I don't know, medieval markets and such uh, where you have <coughs> maybe some show fighters in uh, full armor going at it and well people take photos and then put them on the web and I studied them for position and movement of the body for I'd say a good two hours and then I, I do have an app where I can position a model um, in the way that I wanted so what I did then um I actually, this drawing is put together from four or five different photos, like what armor could look like, what the position is. Um, and then I put my figurine in the pose of each of the fighters. And then I drew it on uh, paper and... Um, copied it to a different kind of a paper so it's that I just have the clean ink lines because honestly I have I like to draw with a very sketchy kind of a um, pencil line so there's like instead of one line there's five or six but I didn't want to have that on the watercolor paper because it really um it really damages the <coughs> the surface of the paper if I then have to go over the uh, paper to erase all of the lines that I don't need. And I didn't want to have some of those lines remain on the paper. That's more something that I do when it comes to architecture or any kind of building or geometric shape. But not so much with uh, human figures. For whatever reason, not too fond of it. I, I don't know why it, that is, but I decided then to, when I had my rough sketch, to um, have one clean copy of it. And then I took that clean copy to my watercolor paper and printed it onto the paper with graphite paper. It takes way, way longer than just simply sketching on the watercolor paper, but this particular paper is so soft um, on the uh, on the surface that I didn't want to ruin the texture. Mm. There's other papers that I did use in the past. I don't have any at my house currently where I could have done that, but not with this particular kind of paper. And you can see every little indentation on this paper. It just stays there. It's very... Um, very much like, um, oh, what's a good, uh, what's a good comparison? Mm. It's almost like, um, those makeup pads where you, like, where you remove makeup or, uh, nail polish or something. The one side is kind of fuzzy and the other side is a little more dense and this paper is like the dense side. If you go across that nail polish removal pad, um, if you go over that with um, a pen or with your fingernail, you see the indentation that the, the pen or your fingernail left on that pad. So it's pretty much the same texture and I didn't want to have that. So I decided to go for the little longer but um, cleaner version of um, drawing this thing pretty much three times. But um, having very clean lines 
on my watercolor paper. So another thing that when you do that, which I think tracing in and on itself is a really good thing if you are trying new subjects where you're not really sure how proportions work or if you're just intimidated or if you're just a beginner um, anyways or if you're more of a colorist and not a drawing person. So everybody has their favorite... <coughs> Sorry their favorite parts of artwork, what they really like to do. Um, so I think tracing is not a bad thing. What I don't like about it though, is that um, you gotta use graphite paper and graphite underneath watercolor. Well, uh, you can't erase the lines. Um, it's not really working. And uh, you just have to incorporate those lines. Either you go on top with ink which is a very valid thing. I think, yeah, I did that last time. The, did the same thing, had a portrait, um, transferred it to uh, my watercolor uh, paper with um, graphite paper and went with ink on top because I wanted more of a cartoony kind of a style. Um, but I didn't want to have that with this painting. I just wanted the watercolor and I didn't want to have the... Um, graphite underneath visible so um, what I decided to do and that is why I'm having this very small brush and I'm going in rather opaque with my watercolor I'm having a little less water than I usually do and that paper soaks up water so much so the uh the paint almost looks like gouache or any kind of opaque watercolor. But it is actually just three, four, five layers of watercolor with not as much water. And I used highly pig pigmented, high quality um, watercolors by Schminke. They're not the Horem ones, they're even more creamy and pigmented, but they're the Academy ones. But I really liked them and I didn't want to uh, mix too many shades. So if I remember correctly, let me, let me try to remember from the top of my head. I don't have my notepad with me where I write down all the colors that I used on a particular painting. When I think I used one, two, three, four, four or five colors, maybe six. But um, it's pretty much um, an olivey green yellow ish. Then my favorite shading color, dark indigo. Uh, then I have a Payne's gray, which is also kind of a bluish gray. Mm, I do have a tiny little bit of black, but not in this part of um, the painting that's going to come later when I um, paint the helmets, uh, so the eye sockets, to be precise. Mm, but all the rest is pretty much just... Oh no, there's another shade of green, maybe? I don't remember. But it's very little color because I had this painting in mind in just chrome oxide green ink, uh, not ink, watercolor. But I decided to add a few more shades like the indigo and um, the paints gray and such because I wanted this to look very rich. When you paint with a monochrome uh, style in watercolors uh, you need for you for one you need a paper that can really soak up a lot of layers mm. and also you have to maybe go a little more into the cartoonish style or the style of uh, almost print so you need to work with white space probably or uh, work with ink outlines, which, again, I didn't want to do. Um, just to 
uh, show where the shadow is uh, or the shaded areas are uh, on your fighters in this case and uh, to create a little bit of depth if you just have it all in one layer it could look kind of boring so i decided nope i'm going to add a few shading colors mainly blue and gray <clears throat> and mix them either with each other so blue and gray or mix green and gray and green and blue to get just different kinds of dark green and this is what i did for both of the fighters it really takes a while to um well paint this fighter in as you can see it's quite the slow process um because i want to be quite precise um i want to work with my graphite lines and not against them or over them i want to incorporate them fully the other thing is this paper, the whole paper is 30 by 30 centimeters. And you see, I'm not even using the full page, <coughs> the full paper size for my fighting scene, because I want to, um, in the end, have a specific kind of a look for my piece of art. I want to have a little bit of uh, white space around it. I want to have this look like a zoom in on a whole big fight scene not just those two um going at each other's throat so i needed to um make my image a little smaller than would be comfortable for me to paint in a faster passion uh fashion so i had to go a little slower third thing that happened on that day um i uh had a little more spastic spasi spasms i still can't say that word it's it's awful and uh on that day it's it was a really hot day i started getting those spasms in my fingers as well that's super super rare it's actually what's called utov's uh, phenomenon in the ms world where you um have funny symptoms that you usually don't have just because it's hot outside mm. and i had to really concentrate on um moving my hand steadily because i didn't i didn't want to ruin the piece um and uh yeah that's that's pretty much what um I can say for the technical things of painting this, uh, at least up to this point. <coughs> <clears throat> so I'm quickly going to rest my voice. I'm going to have a clip or two of music inserted and then I'm going to come back and talk a little more.
you can see where I just dabbed uh, my brush on my paper towel how much paint I've got still remaining in the brush so I really have very little water uh, on <clears throat> uh, on my brush when I go about it with these two figures um, uh, at this point I'm introducing black so well, not at this point, but at this point, um, when it comes to painting the right hand side uh, fighter, because in those eye sockets underneath the helmet, I'm uh, using black, blue and gray to make it really, really dark. Um, I decided to change up the right hand side fighter right hand side fighters helmet a little bit and give him more like the Cylon kind of a look so uh, I'm taking away the um, nose protection there and I'm just painting it all black later on and just give him a different kind of a helmet because uh, when drawing the eye shape or the eye socket shape on the helmet was different enough from the left hand side's fighter uh, for me to see okay these are opposing dudes they're um, not fighting in the same army are kind and are kind of confused on uh, who their opponent is and well fight their own people <clears throat> but once I started painting uh, the difference wasn't as visible anymore since I just use so few colors would have been a totally different kind of a story if I would have used more colors and not just green and for a shading blue, gray and uh, black. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna change that up <clears throat> once I get to the eye sockets in the helmet. But I wanted to let the paint dry a little first, so I went for the coat and gave it kind of like rough edges started shading it a little more mm. you can see the light is coming from the left hand side of the fighter and um, I had to darken up some spots where I thought the uh, coat would be in the shadow and not hit by any light And there's the point where I paint in um, indigo blue, paints gray and black. First I went with painting both eye sockets separately, but in the end I made them one, <coughs> <coughs> one big Cylon or I don't know what other... Um, what other sci-fi or popular culture helmet would you know? I don't know. I, 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 it's, it reminds me of the old Cylons in Battlestar Galactica. So that's where I go in with the very dark. And <clears throat> from this angle with my bright filming lights, you can't really see the difference. But if you look at the photo um, that I... Uh, have on my blog um, you can really see the difference there I'm gonna make it way more visible later on I'm gonna set a highlight and then go back with watercolor on top of that highlight to tone it down a bit <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> mm. but at this point it's it's hardly hardly visible and uh, then I moved on to the left hand side fighter and to distinguish the two of them but still make the painting uh, look mm, let's say cohesive I decided 
to give the left hand fighter just a little more of a blue tint so uh, he's having a little less green in there than the right hand um, fighter but I'm shading way more strongly with blue shades <coughs> gosh I'm so sorry let me drink a sip I hope this helps so um, it's just a very subtle difference between the two but I think it is prominent enough for um, you as the viewer to see okay in the end not at this particular point but in the end to see okay these are opposing forces so um, especially on his chain shirt like underneath the coat uh, I give this one a way way more bluish tint um, just to distinguish him quite a bit but still make it feel as if it is painted all just in this one yellowish olive green and have different kinds of shading colors on top so I still wanted this to almost be a monochrome painting but then again have a little more uh, contrast between the two fighters so I went for a little more of a bluish tint but I'm still just going very slow as you can see and um, I'm just painting 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 with my tiny little brush very little water and highly pigmented watercolor paint <coughs> once I had this whole painting dried and you will see that later in the video um, I, if I wouldn't know or if I wouldn't have painted this if I would have looked at this painting later on um, I would have almost opted for this to be a mixed media page or a mixed media painting because the watercolor paints are so opaque or I painted them in a way that made them look so opaque that I was reminded of the chalky finish of Derwent Ink Tents. So for a hot second I had thought then when I worked at the background like okay do I want to put some ink tents on top to maybe add some more details or maybe not or should I have gone with ink tents for these two figures right away would have been maybe a little more of a quicker process and only have watercolor in the background <coughs> and I could have easily gone for that and it would probably have worked just as well but um, I, I didn't choose it and I felt good about not choosing it because it I, I had the original idea that I would have this or it, it, the inspiration was it is a chrome oxide green um, watercolor painting now I didn't use chrome oxide green because I don't have any but I got close enough on the darker green parts not the fully shaded ones where you have more of a blue tint or gray tint but for example on the right fighter the uh, right hand side of his torso looks more uh, like a chrome oxide green and um, I, I wanted to have that feel and I wanted to stay true to the inspiration of it just being a watercolor painting so I'm I was very happy in in the end that I did not opt for a um, um, mixed media painting though I, I think I could have gotten some pretty nice details maybe especially on the chain <coughs> sorry on the chain shirts or on the helmet or something with um, a little ink tents on top but I didn't want to go for it and I had thought and it was part of the original idea that I would depict movement and the 
the dramatic force of this scene of this depicted scene in a different kind of a way and um, just before I actually applied it I texted the friend who sent me uh, the songs and who said you know just go for it just paint it I texted him sent him a photo of the painting until that point and I said you know now is the moment of truth. Either I'm horribly going to ruin, ruin it and fuck up royally or I'm going to be able to add a little movement, interest, drama stuff. So I, was at the, I wasn't nervous about the painting at any point until that point. Because I liked the outcome of what I have done until that point and I so badly didn't want to ruin it and uh, yeah. But I'm, I'm going to talk more about it when I come to it. So for now you can see here I'm, I'm having <clears throat> way more blue um, mixed into my um, into my color that I had at the right hand fighter and I think that makes for a very subtle but very distinct separation between the two fighters they they look similar like I said but uh, they look so different at the same time so I'm going to go about it um, I'm, I'm gonna play you some more music if I see something while I uh, scroll through here because I'm sl I'm pretty much going to start at watching it twice the speed while I voice over when I see something that I want to talk about until the next big part um, of the painting I'm gonna interject until then uh, it might be you've got like maybe 10 minutes of music coming up.
So at this point in the painting, you maybe saw it a little bit at the when I was painting the sword. <coughs> Sorry. Ah, <clears throat> oh, this is horrible. Um, but um, I really had trouble controlling my hand at this point uh, with this left hand sword. Oh, that that was a real fight to keep my hand steady. But now that I can paint a little bigger surface, I can actually relax my hand and uh, it gets easier for me to control the brush again. And I need new water. It's one of those hot days again. We had the fourth uh, heat wave this, this past week and now it's Monday and we only, in air quotes, we only have 31 degrees today, but still it's too hot for me. <coughs> but it should, <clears throat> should cool down over the next couple of days, so I'm looking forward to that because uh, I have a lot of things to do. Or um, Yeah, it's actually in the past when you see this video, but I have a full week. I'm having three full weeks um, happening. So today is the 30th of July that I'm recording this. Mm. I'm having uh, preparations to do this week for um, my best friend and I going out of town for the weekend. We're at a wedding. It's actually um, the, the last art day video was actually the wedding gift for the wedding that we're going to next Saturday at this point that I'm filming oh, or recording it's actually not filming it's recording because it's only audio mm. and then we have the kids for two weeks so um, I'm actually not all that sure how I'm gonna manage with um, <coughs> excuse me recording videos but um, I, I will I will manage somehow maybe I just film without audio and do voiceovers for the time being. Or I film when they're in bed. I don't know. I, I haven't got the slightest idea yet. But I'm hopefully gonna have managed until you see this video because it, well, only airs in a couple of weeks.
So I think that was the point that I was done with these two. <clears throat> yeah, I think, I think, let's see. I'm just as surprised as you are because it's almost two weeks since I painted this. <clears throat> yeah, I'm done with the dudes. I moved on to a bigger brush and I'm working on the background slash the ground that those guys are standing on. I'm still using the same colors. Um, I just am using way more water than I used at the two fighters. And I can go for what I like about watercolor, this more loose way of painting. So you get more of these blotchy results. Um, the paint goes where uh, the paper is wet and you can, um, well, have some surprise there because uh, you never really know where the water pools or where the paint pools or where it doesn't. And it just makes for some really nice effects. Well, you can control the pooling to a certain extent, but depending on what paper you're using, you sometimes can control it less than on other paper. <coughs> but I'm pretty much starting out with the ground that these guys are standing on, and I'm making that way more dark than the upper section, as you will see in a hot, 10 seconds, minute, no, 10 minutes. It's more than 10 minutes. Uh, I still need to pay attention and go around those figures because um, I don't want the um, paint uh, on the guys to reactivate and have a blotchy look there too. I could have gone a different way, meaning I could have um, have my graphite outlines down, then uh, do the background and then paint the guys on top. But I had that before, not very often, but I don't remember on what paper it happened to me that actually the graphite moved on the paper and um, I had some black particles in spots that I didn't want to have them. So I decided for this very particular painting not to do the background first and then uh, paint my focal point, so my two fighters, but go the other way around and be really, really careful when I uh, got close to those fighters um, with my paintbrush for me not to reactivate that watercolor there. And I wanted to keep those fuzzy, fringy ends of the coat and such. So uh, I really had to be careful not to lose that kind of detail or go, pa go, back, blah, 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 or go back later on and add some more of these cloth fringes there. But you see what I mean with the difference there. Um, when you look at the crown, ground and when you look at those two fighters, they look very different, not in color, but in texture. Uh, so the, the ground is way more blotchy and it pretty much tethers out or feathers out into the white background. And this is what I meant earlier in the video when I said this is something that I really like, particularly with this kind of format on uh, watercolor paper. And um, with um, it's actually a style that I really, really like to work with, having it not having the whole paper covered with watercolor for one and not having a set frame i could also have taped the edges off and then have like a white frame but i i i don't know why 
honestly. I, I think it's just very cool. Maybe it gives a little more movement or it, it makes you feel like you're zoomed into a, z into a scene when you have those uneven edges where um, the white paper just meets watercolor like on the left hand side those well quite harsh lines but then that again not so harsh lines of where I stopped painting I don't know why why I like that so much but I guess it, it it's just preference of mine <coughs> so I'm going for it whenever I feel it's appropriate for a painting or when when I think it fits or um, well when the scene and the format of my surface allow for it I like it way more with square uh, surfaces than I do with rectangle so that's yeah it's just me you know but um, you see I'm getting way lighter with my paint I think at this point I only had the um, olive green yellow ish and yes it really um, is named like that that's that's the name of the paint um, I think I I Uh, started adding pure color here well maybe not on the first layer I definitely did but I have a little indigo mixed into the olive green at this point but I'm getting lighter and lighter and lighter the more I get to the upper left hand side of the painting so where my light source is And I'm also using way more, the, the higher I go and the more I go to the upper left hand side of this scene, the more water I also use uh, when it comes, comes to ratio between watercolor pigment and water. This is the part I really enjoy, just squiggling on my uh, on my paper, having my brush loaded with a lot of water, going into the um, olive green, and then just squiggle, squiggle, squiggle towards the top and the um, left hand side. <coughs> <coughs> So here I'm again a little more restricted because I have to go around the fighters but once I clear that um, safety zone I'm just pretty much using the tremor in my hand to my advantage. There we go, another squiggle. And even more squiggle, squiggle. So that's what I like, because again, you have the paint maybe pull in places that you don't plan, but it makes it really look um, interesting and cool. And it also helps with that effect that I just mentioned, where you are. <coughs> <coughs> where it feels like you get zoomed into a zone because, well, it's like, um, it's, it almost represents movement that, um, that wild edge of the painting. You can see it on the now right-hand side in the background. Um, that kind of quote-unquote frame I think it uh, helps or it, it maybe suggests that you are moving into the scene that's why it's kind of blurry on the outside like um, 
and and maybe a little more blotchy so uh, that's what I like uh, that's why I like the uh, this way of painting and it makes for such a nice contrast to the focal point not color wise not at all <clears throat> but in regards of texture You can see I'm pretty much going in with almost only water, just a tiny little bit of paint and then just add the pure olive green yellow-ish. So I'm pretty much priming the paper with water for the paint to move wherever it wants to move. <clears throat> so a good way or a pretty decent way to do that is go on top of your paper with water only no matter if it's clean water or not I didn't have to get clean water because I was pretty much using the same paints throughout the paint uh, throughout the painting mm. and uh, just Put a layer of quite watered down pigment on top. Maybe do that two or three times and you get um, pretty nice um, dynamic results. That's a wonderful word, dynamic. I think it fits particularly with uh, the scene that I painted. So I'm pulling a little more of the pure green pigment into the lower part of my background because um, it looked like okay you've got the ground then you've got shrubbery and behind you've got trees but I wanted it to be a little more fuzzy so um, and a little lighter too so I pulled the um, olive green a little lower into the painting Now I'm trying to feather out some of those harsher lines. Some of them I want to keep, some of them I don't because I'm getting lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter towards the top. So I don't want to have that harsh of a quote-unquote frame as I do have on the lower part of um, the background. Like where a little above the the um, ground the guys are standing on. So pretty much when you look at the right hand side fighter, well, not now that they're upside down, but when you look straight at the picture, the right hand side fighter, his knee is pretty much the, um, the height where I decided, okay, I'm, if I'm going higher, 
on that uh, painting. I want to be a little more loose, not that, um, not that, um, heavy, no, heavy is the wrong word, but not that crass between, okay, here's white paper, here's the painting. I wanted to have that for a lower part, but not so much the upper part of this particular piece. It's um, a way softer fade out towards the top of the painting. <clears throat> I hope my cold is really gonna be gone until the weekend because I don't want to have a cold at the wedding. Because I know that I'm way more exhausted and I don't want to be. So keep fingers crossed, guys. I will let you know on the social medias. And there's my painter fly. Don't know if you just saw it on screen. <coughs> but for two or three videos now, I always had a fly buzzing, um, either disturbing my audio or flying in front of the camera, like disturbing the focus. I don't know, I, I seem to have art buddies in form of flies every time I paint but you know it's been so hot um, we've had windows open so of course they come in because <clears throat> they're curious what I'm painting so this is what I mentioned earlier uh, now that I do have my foreground in uh, my background in <clears throat> I'm cleaning some edges up, like especially on the knee of the soldier and his coat or fighter. I don't know if he's a soldier. And I do have my big old head in frame. Well, sorry about that. You can't really see what I'm doing. I, I really have to get used to my new um, art table. It's a little narrower than the one that I had before. But the one that I had before is currently my kitchen table, so yeah. I I just have to get used to sitting differently at my art desk. And especially when I'm not talking while I film. But if I just say listen to music like I did here, I forget that I'm having the video camera recording and then I just have my big old head in frame so sorry about that just adding tiny little details um, getting rid of some of those white little specks where uh, the paint didn't really hit the creases of the water of the watercolor paper And still uh, adjusting a tiny little bit of the shading. Just tiny little things before I can dry off this painting. And um, get 
uh, on with the final little details. And as per usual, I always cut out when I'm using my blow dryer because I think, ah, that's just stealing your guys' time. But I've been drying this painting in between. Let me count. How many cuts do I have? One, two, two times already. And a third time is gonna come up. <clears throat> And for some of the final final details I keep the I think I kept the blow dryer in. We'll see if I remember correctly because again it's been two weeks since I painted this and I pretty much edited the footage like a day or two after I painted this. But then I had more than a week of um break working on art videos because it was just hard and I was just laying in my bed sleeping all day long and also all night long. So I pretty much just got up when I had to go to the loo or had to drink something, take my pills or uh, eat something and I wasn't really hungry when it was that hot so um, the, yeah. It's, see, there was a nice jump, so there was a point where I had dried off my painting. And you can see I do have highlights on the helmet. Mm, oh, did I lose that footage in between? I think I did. So I went over the eye sockets with a fine line of gel pen and then went over it with a very very watered down paints gray to make just those tiny highlights and now <clears throat> that was the point where just before I started this was the point where I texted my friend and said ah, I'm either gonna fuck it up now or it's gonna be glorious so I did the paint splatter and I'm standing up at this point in the video so my big old head will be in frame even more but I can't really do splatter well when I'm sitting down. I don't know why, but it is um, it is what it is. So I started with green, then I went on with blue on top. And between every uh, color that I splattered with this fan brush, by the way, my favorite brush for splattering watercolor, mm, I dried my paper in between because I didn't want to have big splotches and I didn't want the blue and the green to <clears throat> to mingle too much so I wanted to splatter it on dry surface <clears throat> so what I think the splattering um, adds is either well blood splatter or just Mm, by the way, I'm sorry I'm eating meanwhile because oh, I'm, I'm feeling kind of nauseous. My blood pressure is not great today. So I gotta help myself with some almonds. Um, so I didn't want to have the big splotches for one because I wanted the blood's better feeling, which um, I think is better with a smaller brush. But I also added these uh, speckles where you would not anticipate to have them, just to have interest in movement. So it's dirt um, coming up from the ground because they're moving and maybe stomping their feet and it's on dry earth and not on smooth stone or grass. And uh, on top, where, uh, at the swords, it's blood spatter because they hit somebody or they mm, had their sword um, dug in earth as well. So they're getting mm, some earthy bits up into the sky. So this is what I wanted to have or, or why I wanted to have blood spatter because I think it makes the painting more dynamic. 
it adds interest, lets it look less flat. <coughs> 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 And for this particular scene here, it actually fits with what is happening. So I did splatter green, gray, blue, and that had everything dried off in between. And then I added white um, to, to have the white gel pen on the eye sockets. Um, to have them match color-wise. Um, I did use opaque white watercolor and it doesn't really dry white. It's like a tiny little bit of gray or blue because it, it takes a bit of the color that is underneath. So um, it's pretty much the same feeling um, that you get from the highlights on the helmet. And um, that is that is pretty much the painting. Uh, here's the blow dryer. So <clears throat> this is what I did pretty much every time when I um, had some splatter added. Dry, set the brushes down, dry it off, set it down, dry it off, blah blah blah. But that is the painting. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna rest my voice now. I'm gonna see you on art day in two weeks with <clears throat> a new project. I hope you enjoyed. If you're new to, to the channel and want to see more, please subscribe and hit the bell button so that you're notified. And um, if you like this video, well, give it a th thumbs up. I would love it. Have a good day. Take good care. I'm going to see you next time. Bye.